Now a bit about the basic palette I've got here. <clears throat> this is what I generally recommend is having something like this. Doesn't have to be exactly these colors, but something like it will give you your biggest mixing potential. So I've got 11 colors here. So most basic palettes are somewhere between 10 and 12 colors. When you buy a set of paints, they'll probably be something like this. May not be exactly the same names of these colors, but it's this idea. We've got the three primary, primary colors of yellow, red, and blue, but there's two of each. I've got a warm and cool of each one of those primary colors. That's gonna give me my biggest mixing potential. So like I was showing before, I can mix out and make brighter colors, or I can mix in such as if I'm painting a sky and I go, okay, I want a blue sky and I put down some phthalo blue, I might go, oh, that's too cool. I don't, uh, my sky is not nearly this cool today. Well, I've got another blue, this ultramarine blue. Put that down and I go, oh, that's too warm. That's too violety. I need something in between these. I don't need to buy an in-between color. I can just mix them together and by the proportion of one to the other, I can control that temperature. Now, I mentioned that mixing colors will make them duller, but if we look at those two colors, I've got the ultramarine blue over here, got the phthalo blue over here, and while that's really far apart on the blue scale, it's not all that far apart. I'm not gonna get any noticeable dulling because those colors are not traveling that far apart. And the same thing holds true with the other colors. So theoretically, all we need are these six colors and we can mix up everything else. But out of convenience, particularly if you're gonna paint, be painting a lot of landscapes, something like a hooker's green, sap green, terra verde, a duller green to start with just looks more natural. A lot of sets, a lot of greens will be something like this. This is phthalo green. And you see that's way too bright for most foliage you're gonna be painting. Now, of course, like I mentioned, you can dull this down pretty easily. But you may find that having something like the hooker's green deep, sap green, something like that, is just so convenient to start with. Then you go, well, I wanna make that uh, darker, more shadowy. I think take a little bit of the ultramarine blue, mix that in. That's gonna darken, cool, blue that green up, making it more of a shadow color. Then I could do the same thing with some lemon yellow to create sunshine. This will lighten up those colors, warm them considerably, and give more of a sunshine look to that green. So easy way to push that green, duller, darker, warmer, brighter for with the uh, lemon yellow. Now what else I have here is uh, the earth colors. This is yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. Again, I could mix these colors down and make these, but it's just so much more convenient, particularly if you're doing landscapes, to have these to start with. You'll also find when you're buying more expensive paints that your brighter colors are much more expensive than your duller colors. So it's also more economical to have these earth colors, particularly if you're doing a lot of them in your paintings. Then lastly, what I have here is ivory black. This is a very transparent black, easy color to darken things up with. Now there's a lot of people that say, don't use black. I can easily mix a very strong dark by taking ultramarine blue and burnt umber and mixing those colors together. And I can make something that will approximate the ivory black, and that's fine. There, oftentimes I'll use something like this for my darks. But you will find that if you never learn how to work with black, you just never will. And sometimes it's just very convenient 
it is extremely transparent. It's more transparent mixture than the blue-brown combination. So those are the 11 colors I would recommend. Lemon yellow, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium red, light, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, hooker's green deep, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, ivory black, or some colors equivalent to that. And that'll get you a very good start with your color mixing. So hope this was helpful and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.